Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ant Eater TV's fourth episode of Shoot Your Zot. I'm Sydney. And I'm Adrian, and we'll be your hosts for the evening. Shoot Your Zot is a speed dating game show where UCI students get to take a chance at romance with fellow ant eaters. For this episode, we're doing things a little differently. Today, we have five friends who will be shooting their Zot at our bachelor. For this game, we've got one bachelor and five female contestants who will get to know each other over the course of three rounds. After that, we'll see if anybody meets their match. Now let's introduce our contestants. First up, we have Anteater number one. She is 20 years old and she is a junior psychological sciences major. Next up is Anteater number two. She is 20 years old and is a junior psychology major. Now we have Anteater number three. She is 20 years old and is a junior mathematics major. Next is Anteater number four. She is 22 years old and is a junior English major. And lastly, Anteater number five. She is 21 years old and is a junior criminology, law, and society major. Now that we've met all of our contestants, let's introduce you all to our bachelor. He is 22 years old and is a senior education sciences and public health double major. So let's go ahead and get started with round one. Um, this round is just gonna be a way to break the ice with everyone before we all turn our cameras on and dive into the deeper stuff. So you will all have five minutes for this first round. We'll give you a little icebreaker to get you started. What's something exciting you did this past week? So I can go ahead and go first since I just uh, came back from a trip from San Francisco. So that was the first thing that was pretty exciting. Um, and that was why there was a delay today, which I do apologize for making you all wait. Um, yeah, so that was my exciting thing I did today. Or sorry, this week. I don't know. I started a new job, so that's pretty cool. I work for a uh, criminal defense attorney. I'm just like filing like paper for her. I did start t tutoring uh, a middle school, which is kind of exciting because it just reminded me of why I'm majoring and what I chose to major in, which is math. I am like still training at uh, my job. I start like my actual like first day is on Monday, but I got more training this week and I'm nervous excited. So. I went to Laguna Beach and ate tacos, but that was also with all of them. So it's really not that special because they were all there. I went to go get some boba after taking some midterms. So I think that's about it. Time is up for our speed first round. We will now take a brief break. Welcome back, everybody. We're now moving on to round two. In this round, our bachelor will turn on his camera and finally introduce himself to you all. Then he will ask general questions that each of you will answer one by one. When it is your first turn to answer, turn on that camera and introduce yourself. You have 10 minutes for this second round. Bachelor, introduce yourself and ask your first question. Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Ethan and I hope that everyone has a great time today. Uh, my first question to everyone is, well, simply describe your ideal life. And for me, um, in simple terms, uh, briefly, I would just say my ideal life would be to always live a life that is full of love and, and passion and to always go after what you desire and yeah, live life to your fullest potential. Okay, so my ideal life, um, I don't know if you've seen Soul recently, I but have. that movie really made me cry and I went out in the rain really dramatic romanticized my life after that um, and that really made me notice that I should like enjoy the little things and not worry about my purpose in life so that's just in the little things I would just always want to be happy I don't know I feel like I would never want to have the feeling of like am I missing out should I be doing something else like I want to have like a, a purpose and like feel confident in what I'm doing and just feel good about it Hi, my name is Julia. I'm a math major, like you heard in the beginning, and I kind of live by this motto that a YouTube channel I watch, they're called Yes Theory, they represent and they live by, which is seek discomfort. So my, my ideal life is just pretty much living day by day and doing things out of my comfort zone so I don't live my life in fear. 
Hello, my name is Valerie and I guess you can say I like to live on the adventurous side. Well, before COVID and all that stuff, I used to go um, hiking and then I would do marathons and then I would um, take my artwork and put it in display at local pu uh, public libraries. And then like um, my, one of my recent accomplishments were like running an eight mile. So I really want to do that. So I live in Irvine or like on campus and I really want to try to run to Newport Beach before I leave campus. So those are one of my main goals right now. And I know you mentioned that you live life by adventure. Um, how do you feel about tattoos? Oh, I have a bunch. <laughs> Can I show you? I have my tattoo says adventure on there. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I really love the, like that typical like paper airplane kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Or something. Yeah, like, that's awesome. Yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to too. Hello, um, I'm Daniela. Um, nice to meet you. Um, my ideal life would basically just be like a life where I like, um, like no longer am like worried about like having like an ideal self. Like, like I feel like my ideal self has changed throughout I guess phases of my life, such as like in high school, community college, college now. So my ideal life would just be one of where like I'm traveling, I'm working for myself, um, I have lots of dogs. I think that would be like my ideal life. Um, so yeah. So my second question would be, what is the best advice that anyone has ever given you? It could be life, ad life advice or anything in general that just like kind of just stuck with you. Um, so the best life advice um, would be to start my credit score early. Um, since I'm like first generation Mexican parents that had no clue what it was and I did start when I was 18 and now it's that's it. Uh, the best advice uh, my mom gave me is not really advice it's more like getting like perspective it's like will this matter in 10 years I get to, I tend to like stress about like the small stuff so when like I'm stressing she's like is this gonna matter in 10 years I'm like no and she's like, okay, then stop stressing about it so much. And that is very helpful for me. Yeah, that tends to be very helpful, especially because I'm I, I'm also that way where I have I stress about, you know, little things as well. Yeah. And having that mindset of, you know, is does it really matter now or is it gonna matter later, like you mentioned? And that tends to kind of reduce that stress and alleviate kind of the emotions going going that you're feeling in those moments. So for me, I would say that the most recent was to be selfish in the sense of always do things that are going to help you. So let's say like you're friends with someone, but they're really toxic because, you know, to friendships can be toxic as well, or they're just not making you happy or allowing you to be the best version of yourself, that you should be selfish and not really consider their feelings about you walking away. So just knowing that it's going to hurt, but that you need to overall do what's going to be best for you. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you, you, you know, you've successfully figured that out. And, you know, I, I also had to figure that out myself as well. And, and that just comes with time and experiences, like you mentioned. Um, I also tended to put people before me and I had to learn the hard way that sometimes it's very, um, it's very painful uh, to go through those processes and uh, definitely takes a lot of healing time. But uh, yeah, I hope that you, you find that within yourself as well. Um, I think mine would be always be kind um, because what my mom would say was like, do good and you receive good. So even though the person might be a mean person, <laughs> um, just be nice because you don't know what they're going through and all that stuff. So just try to approach them nice cannily or if you can help, you can help instead of being like, um, oh, I have everything. I don't want to, you know, help. So, yeah, that's what I try to live by. They do good and receive good. Oh, um, hi. Okay, so um, my best advice uh, that has ever been given to me has been, um, it's in Spanish. Well, I can translate it. It just means um, my, gra my grandma told me this. She said um, that there's a, pro there's a solution to every problem and like to like not stress about like anything that comes my way because it's gonna work itself out basically. And so 
anytime I've ever had a problem that happened to me, whether it's like big or like small, I always like, I get stressed out about it, but then I have to remind myself that there's always gonna be a solution to every single problem. And even though she was giving me that advice for like a, a small thing that happened, I lost a shoe and I needed it to go to formal. And when it was like, and I was making a big deal about it, but still I apply it to like any, anything. So that's probably like the most calling thing that advice I've been told. Yeah, awesome. Ethan, how would you ask, um, answer that question? So the best advice that someone has given me you know, there's been so many, that I, so many epiphanies that I've had, but I think overall is just to always live the life that you want, whether or not it's difficult or whether or not there's going to be challenges along the way and to know that there will be those moments where you, you think you failed or you will fail, but you have to remind yourself that in order to succeed, you have to go through those trials and errors. So I think that's probably one of the best life advice for me. So, all right, everybody, time is up for round two. So we'll now take uh, another short break. We're gonna go back into your breakout rooms um, before the final round. Welcome back, everyone. We are now in the final round. In this round, The Bachelor will have individual conversations with each contestant, and that way he can get to know them on a more personal level. Ada, um, I know you mentioned that or you're passionate about kids. When did you realize that? Was that at a young age or did you always know? Oh, well, there's a deep um, trauma story behind it, but to okay. make it easier, um, when I was a kid, just things were not going well. That's why I kind of chose a career in the path of going as a psychological science major because I would want to be a child um, protective services caseworker. Basically, I just grew up knowing that I wanted to help kids like me and kids like my family. I can understand because I've also experienced um, some sort of child trauma too. So I definitely understand that feeling of wanting to give back to children. I actually, uh, my mom works for a, a children's hospital. That's one of the reasons why I, I'm choosing a medical route. Sorry, I there's- noticed, But I changed my outfit too. I put my overalls down. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you're gonna notice, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, did you know we were roommates? I did, they mentioned that. So I was gonna ask uh, Sarah, let's ask uh, Sarah, since you're an eater number two. Uh, how do you yeah. feel about being all together um, in the same game show as roommates. And are you guys in separate rooms, by the way? The situation we have is like we all share the same bed. Uh, no, just <laughs> Wow, that's a huge bed. <laughs> no, it's actually a twin XL. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> so we're, we live in Arroyo Vista. Um, me, Ada, and Daniela live in one house, and then Valerie and Julia live in the house next to us. The same RA, so like we know each other. And how and do I guys... feel about this? Yeah, of being together. Absolutely on... terrible. No. <laughs> Why? Why is that? I'm just Are kidding. No, they're fun. Together? They're a good time. Are you guys going to be talking about it after everything? You guys are going to gather in your one twin XL bed? Yeah. And, and talk about it. Oh, hey, right. you signed up for this. I did. Um, I did. That's and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's totally cool. That's totally cool. I just, I know it's going to happen after this. After this, I think I'm making them dinner. Oh, nice. Do you guys rotate? Like, who makes dinner? I, mm, it's not. Sarah, don't lie. It's usually me and you. Dinner. No, it's me and you. I buy food. I buy food. Stop. Yeah, you buy food, but that doesn't mean you make the meals. <laughs> I made Alfredo and ravioli. I didn't mean to stir up the pot. One like, time. Literally. Okay, no, it was okay, one Sarah, time, Ada. Uh -oh. One time, one like, time. I'm only going to cook one time a month now. to say that she only cooks. But that and then she small. made this pasta okay, once. Please. I, hey, come on. Hey, hey, hey. You made this pasta one time, and she put so much red pepper flakes. Gigi Hadith's pasta. I wanted them to try okay, it. Okay, well, you made it wrong. Haters. It killed me. I was dying. This always happens. You just have to yell at them to stop or they're going to know it. Is it always between Ada and Sarah? Yes. yes. Sometimes it's me and Daniela. Yeah. Okay. But it's, I think I'm just problematic is the thing. I'm the peacemaker between them. And you're going to be the teacher, correct? Yes. Do you, do you know what grade do you want to teach? I want to like, teach freshman. High school I, or college? 
high school. So I started tutoring two years ago <laughs> and they were, it was a freshman algebra class. So I want to start off with freshmen and then from like there go to junior because that's when they learn pre-calc and I like pre-calc and then hopefully in the future math like being a math professor. That's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I love math too. It's fun. Do you find math fun? Am I the only one? No. It's like it's it's solving the problem, right? It's like you, your brain wants to figure something out. Interesting. And when, when did you know that you were so drawn to math? In elementary school, the state oh, wow. test that you had to take, I got like a perfect score on the math portion. So ever wow. since, ever since Snaps then, to that. Thank you. Perfect not score. score. Twice. I, oh, now she's flexing on us. She's um, flexing on us. Not, not to flex. And I had like a <laughs> on my, like in my room with my face that said 600 on it. Wow, big flex. So, Valerie, um, when did you when did you uh, get into running? I think since I was like in elementary school. So my dad, like, said we were fat. So he was like, "You need to go run." So we wake up at like six a.m. and he would make us run at his pace, and his pace was really fast. And so I got into running from there, and then I stopped a little bit. And then starting high school, I um, went into track and field. So yeah, um, I did running and throwing. Um, after high school, I started running on my own. Awesome. So, so you've actually like ran a marathon before? Yep. How so many have you? Three. How many? How many? Three. Three. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot because each one is 24 miles, right? Yeah. For about? Not all at once. Not all at once, though. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Got it. So, uh, Daniela, uh, what, what's your love language? I think I have a mix of, I think they sound really conceited together, but it makes sense. Gift giving and then also acts of service. As uh, My emphasis is on acts of service, though, because I really appreciate when someone does something for me that isn't, like, a big deal. And I agree with, like, the thought of, uh, the thought of someone giving you such a thoughtful gift. is like, it's different from them um, giving you something that maybe to them seems more like valuable or um, just expensive. I know a lot of people try and try and get the most expensive gift for people, which is, which is fine sometimes or um, if you prefer that, but uh, I'm definitely the one that has mostly given thoughtful gifts. Okay, so round three is up. We will now go into individual <laughs> breakout rooms to see if Ethan and any of our contestants want to shoot their zot with each other. After the break, we'll reveal if Ethan has met his match or missed his zot. Welcome back, everybody. So we are back and we have some results. Our bachelor, Ethan, has matched with Daniela, and Ethan number five. <laughs> oh, congrats, y'all. Um, Daniela, anything you want to say? Um, yeah. Um, this was uh like fun. This was cool. Yeah, Julia basically said it. If you chose one of us, you got all of us. So it's a good vibe. And so as for our contestants. Thank you all for still shooting yours out. Thank you everyone who participated. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. All right. Is that a knife? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she's all, she's all, she's all, no, I was eating Nutella with a strawberry and I was holding it to pop. Oh, that's chill. <laughs> I think one of them may have requested maybe to see you without the hat on. I don't know. You know? I was, you know, I was thinking that, but you know, I was wearing it earlier and I have, so my hair is like naturally like wavy, but Take it. Yeah, kind of like. Um, but so when I put a hat on, it it flattens my hair, so it looks straight, and I don't like the way. It, I mean, it looks okay, but I, I don't really. I'll, I'll wear it. Like I, I can take it off. But um, yeah, I prefer when my hair is like just naturally, like it looks like volu volu voluminous. Is that what? Yeah, voluminous, right? Hey, Aunt 
eaters do you or a friend want the chance to be featured on the next episode of shoot your zot well hop on over to tinyurl.com forward slash syz 2021 to sign up to have a chance to be on our next episode of shoot your zot Ooh.